some new fun ideas to try. My name is Lisa Fair. I'm the Director of Online Fundraising at the March of Dimes. Joining me also from the March of Dimes are Sharon Cole and Chris Belugo, um, also from our fundraising online fundraising department, and Heather Ray from One Main Financial Headquarters in Baltimore, Maryland. Heather's going to share some of the ways that they promote March Rabies and online fundraising at One Main. Um, and then after she's shared with us, we'll open up the conference line so that you can ask any questions. Um, Heather, have you joined us yet? Yes, I'm on, Sharon. Lisa. Yay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, phone difficulty. Um, we are we are all in different places, so um, we're just kind of playing this this first phone call by by ear. So, just as a little bit of background, um, and Heather, you're welcome to add more um, information if you'd like. The one main financial team was the number one team in the Central Maryland Division in 2012, and year after year is in the top five. Um, teams in that location year after year. Last year, the team raised $59,000, and 58000 of that was raised by the team walkers. Um, 33000 of what those walkers raised was online by credit card and PayPal, which is a great um, percentage of, of online collections. The other thing that's really remarkable about this team is that they have about 500 people in this location, and 300 of them participated with March for Babies. So that's just a fantastic participation rate. Um, what we're going to do is just kind of ask Heather a few questions, and then Heather's going to share with us how they manage the the whole team process and and really get things going so um sharon if you and heather want to go ahead please sure great and I'd like to welcome everybody who's on the phone with us today as well <clears throat> we've talked to heather and she's an amazing person and that's why we've joined her have her join us today so that she can share some of the really cool and awesome things she's been doing with her team and online fundraising so Heather, can you tell us a little bit about your team and how it's structured and why online fundraising is important to you and your team? Sure. Um, first, I have to start by saying that I partner with um, Chrissy Callista. Um, she's also um, on our local Maryland uh, March of Dimes Board of Directors, so she is a very integral um, part of what we do and how we set up our, our team structure at Women Financial. Um, we both chair a month-long campaign at our home office, and we basically found um, that there are three things that motivate the people we work with every day, competition, food, and free things. Um, so I'm sure I'll make references to that as, as we go along, but um, before I go there, I think the biggest thing we've found that, that helps us is executive support. It's, it's key for getting people involved we, if our management structure is involved and supportive of the events that we hold, then it follows down the line. So we set up um, an executive sponsor role, and we have, um, this will be the second year in, the, in, the, in a row that our uh, marketing executive is sponsoring it, but we always have um, one of our president's direct reports that sponsors our campaign, and uh, he works with us, helps us get access to all of the senior managers on site. We're invited to their management team meetings to share our plans for the campaign and also gives us an opportunity to tell them what we think we need from them to help make the company's campaign successful. And so from that came an executive match where our president and each of her um, direct employees um, offered a, a, a fundraising tool that they would match some of their um, their fundraisers on their team uh, with donations if they reach certain levels, um, and that would help the employee actually attain the March of Dimes levels for free T-shirts or gift cards, and then we also do something similar to that within our own home office campaign. So that, that was the first thing that we did. And then because we have about 500 people in the building and multiple different business areas, we found what worked best for us is if we engaged champions for each of the different business lines. So we asked for one or two volunteers from each of the direct reports areas to act as a, um, 
uh, March for Babies champion for their teams, and they would be responsible for running their own mini campaigns within their own departments to raise funds and also for keeping their departments motivated to participate, getting them registered to walk, being a focal point for people in their area to ask questions about how to do things, where to do things, and what's coming up. Christy and I manage the overall campaign, and we handle the communication out to our building and the reporting uh, and keeping all that information rolled out to the team captain so um, we can just keep everybody motivated and informed. So that's kind of the structure. And then the online fundraising tool we found is the best way to help us keep track of how our teams are doing so we can quickly and easily gather our combined team results every week um, let our executives know um, how we're doing, um, how they're doing amongst their peers. Um, we do um, an executive challenge also, and at the end of the campaign, there's a little fun thing we do with that. But our folks are very competitive, and so if we uh, we have a challenge to see which uh, team can raise the have the most walkers and the most uh, the most participation and raise the most money on, on an average per person basis and then um, they're competing all month long and they'll sit on the same floor so it's it's funny to to kind of watch them and we have a board in the cafe where we track the progress and move people's faces around so everybody that comes down can see kind of where they stand yeah. that's awesome yeah I, it all boils down to once again you're talking about competition food and free stuff i kind of like that <laughs> um, but it sounds like that you and Christina have a pretty well-oiled machine. Um, how far in advance do you start getting everything set up? Um, yeah, we try to try to create a document that helps us um, stay on track. But um, we we basically start getting together about six to eight weeks before uh, the campaign starts, if we can, and really just to start. Reviewing last year's goals, what did we set, how close did we come, how much did we beat them by, and then what should our new goals um, be for the coming year. Um, we, we do hold a kickoff event on site at the beginning of our campaign, um, and so we like to have our, our, our company president there and our executive sponsor to speak. Um, so we would like to get on their calendars as early as possible. And then we also um, invite all of our team captains to the Greater Baltimore kickoff breakfast, so they're sure to be motivated and do a great job. And meeting this early gives us time to recruit those employees and, and get the meeting on their, their calendars. And we actually, um, our fundraising month is the month of April. Yeah, cool. I really do like the concept of that internal champion, uh, and you have champions on a lot of different levels, and I think, I think that speaks a lot to your success. I want to go back to you a little bit, though, about this executive match and how it works. You were talking about the matching um, based on fundraising of each participant. Tell me a little bit more about how that, that boosts into the online fundraising. Sure. So um, we each of the executives, and, and it's it's different by different executives. Some, some departments are much larger than others. Um, some are smaller, so some of the executives can afford to throw out a larger number. But um, basically – they throw out a challenge to their employees that says for every, you know, every employee that raises at least $75 online, I will go on your walker page and I will donate another $25 to your walk. Um, and then our president does the same thing. Um, the amounts are vary, but this, the thought is the same, that there's a level that their employees have to reach, and then they will personally contribute online to their fundraising page um, a similar dollar amount. Our president does it, and it's kind of nice for the employees to see, you know, Mary McDowell on their on their Walker uh, donation form or Jim Ryan on their Walker donation form, and it also helps them to achieve free stuff. So they can hit the different um, incentive levels that the March of Dimes holds for them, and then if we've set any internal goals, it also, it also helps for that. Yeah. I really like that idea. And it, it speaks to, once again, going back to your your issue of competition and that fundraising bar, watching that fundraising bar go up, I think really um, assists in, in fueling that competition. So that's really cool. Um, I know that you have a team kickoff. Um, tell us about the online fundraising things that you do leading up to that kickoff. Sure. We do a few things. Um, uh, we have a quick start promotion before the kickoff. And then you know, at the kickoff itself, we try to bring a personal approach to our campaigns. Um, so from a quick start standpoint, 
Um, we like to raise as much money as possible before the kickoff so we can share what our goal is and how close to it we already are before we've even started. And one of the things that our um, folks just love wearing blue jeans to work. So what we've done is anyone that raises or donates $125 or more by our kickoff date, they get to wear jeans every day um, that month to work. And it's it's a great boost to our campaign with the, the dollars received, but it's just a, another unintended benefit for our employee morale. They just It's really interesting to see how happy people get when they can wear jeans all month long. Um, and then the other thing is the personal touch that I mentioned before. Um, we like to show at our kickoff uh, how the dollars raised actually help um, people in our community, um, the things that um, some of the money goes towards, but we also like to show how the money has helped people that they see and work with every day. So we've had local ambassador families come and share their stories and bring their children, which, which is always great. And then last year we changed it up a little bit and actually had um, a number of our employees either bring in their children or their grandchildren or speak about you know, uh, a parent that had, you know, the polio vaccine or any anything that tied into the work that the March of Dimes did and how, you know, they were affected and the children were there. And it was very touching, very funny. You never know what little kids are going to do, but um, it, it really went over well. And then immediately following that part of the presentation, we put slides in to show um, our employees how they would register online and little screenshots and here's what you do, click here, click here, here's the team name. Just go through all of that. Very simple. Give them the champions' names that if they still are having trouble, who they can reach out to that can come to their desk and help them register if they like. And then right after that, we show a slide of all the different people that you could ask for help that you might not think of, your doctor, your dentist, your 31 home sales consultant rep anybody. And then we just try each year to change things up a little bit to keep people interested, um, get them down to the kickoff. Because once once we get them down there and they hear what we have to say, you can just tell that they're they're ready to go. They're motivated. They want to help the cause. They want to beat their coworker in the competitions and they're they're excited and ramped up and ready to go. Yeah, speaking of that, that's really true in, in the the amount of kickoffs that I've seen and been to um, you know, you get a really lot of excitement built up and things, but then, you know, then the participation starts. So what do you do after the kickoff to keep people kind of excited and still going um, throughout the course of the, uh, as you're doing the campaign? Uh, we, we really, we have a lot of things that go on throughout the month in our uh, building. So one of the biggest things that we, we focused on and, and really have done a much better job over the last few years is communication about the events. You know, we want to do a lot of fun things and keep people excited, but we also want to limit the interruption to the to business and the workday. So Chrissy and I have centralized um, all of the communication that goes out. So um, all of our different team captains filter everything through us. We have a template that we use for communication. We send it out by email to the entire building once a week. That contains all of the events that we have planned, when they will be, um, where they will be, and who will be sponsoring them. And these things range from anything from a themed basket sweet steak. So we have um, each of the business areas um, donates a, a basket, a themed basket, like a coffee basket or a gift card basket. And then we do a sweepstakes, which lasts all um, all month long. And then we um, have other things like bake sales or executive dance competitions. We found things that tend to embarrass management, always draws a big crowd. Um, but just making sure folks know when those things are going on and then that we also work very closely with the champions to make sure that, you know, we only have one thing going on a day. Everybody has equal opportunities to participate and try to keep things fair and fun. Um, we also send out weekly communications about our participation goals and our dollar goals, where we are and how much we have left to go to our champions so that they can share that with their teams and keep them motivated. And then we've also done things um, to encourage additional uh, walker registrations after the kickoff. Um, now that the jeans challenge is over, we would collect gift cards or donations from some of the local businesses. And then each week we would draw a name of a registered walker um, 
you know, out of a hat, and then they would win a prize. So it kept them, you know, motivated to register early so that they had more opportunities to win free stuff. But it also, um, there was also still something in it for folks that, that hadn't yet registered by the kickoff. Yeah. You know, it comes to mind as, as you're talking, there's a couple of more C words that you can add to your success. One would be the champion. It sounds like the champions are really integral to just keeping things rolling for you. And then the other C would be communication. Um, it sounds like there's just a constant buzz about how things are going and how we're doing and getting people to kind of stay with the whole the whole program. So I think those are, are really critical C's that you've got going there for you. Right. Um, I've noticed that, and in chatting with you, I've noticed that over the last few years, I'm sure that in particular the financial institution, but there's a lot of other people probably on the phone where they've had challenges that could affect growing the team. Can you share a little bit about that? Um, sure. Um, I think one of the first things that we had heard was uh, because the, the March for Babies occurs on the weekends, a lot of people either can't take the time uh, to come back down to the city. If people live somewhat you know, far away. Some people have commutes up to an hour, and they don't want to come back into the city for the march, but, but they did want to help raise money. They just didn't want to raise funds for a walk they weren't going to participate in. So we did a couple little things around you know, wearing a sticker and you can walk at work, but didn't seem to kind of solve the problem. So I think it was two years ago. It might have been three we actually decided to do uh, an actual walk at work, and we created a mini version of the March for Babies where we would start outside at the park across the street from our building. Um, we had our president come down, um, address the walkers, cut the ribbon, um, and then we would walk from our office down to the Inner Harbor and, and, and back again. And I just having that one hour time during lunch um, with again the management support, having management down there, having them walk with us, really helped us raise the um, the number of walkers that raised funds over the last three years. Um, but you also mentioned, I mean, these are tough economic times they've been, and we've all been facing um, our employee bases getting a little bit smaller instead of bigger, which continues to make it harder to always beat our best or go that next dollar more. So because we're very competitive, we, we were trying to think of other ways to um, still raise our walker counts without having a greater base to pull from. And so we just asked our folks here to reach out to their friends and their families and ask them to join our team. It didn't have to be just a one main team. So we've had a lot of friends. We've had a lot of um, family members, you know, mothers, fathers, spouses, children join, um, they register under our team name, they raise funds, um, they get a one main t-shirt, and then we all walk together. So that's definitely helped as well. Good, good. I like that idea. Um, <clears throat> any other things that you're planning to do this year that's new and different, uh, some of the excitement that you're starting to generate? Well, I don't want to give away all of our secrets, and actually we're still... Hello. Still planning. I'm just teasing. We're still in the planning stages, but you know, one of the things that um, that we we did last year, I think we're going to do it again this year. Was um, in the past, we, it was funny because we have about 275 or 76 people that walked and raised money, but we had 303 people that that signed up to walk online. So anyone that had registered in the um, Pass would would receive a, a T-shirt, and you know we had changed our company name about a year ago, and so it, T-shirts with a new name on it were a hot commodity. So we said, hey, let's let's follow the March of Dimes lead, and let's set a limit. So you have to register online, and you have to have raised funds. I think it was ten dollars, uh, or maybe it was fifteen to get a T-shirt, and so um, I think that helped a little bit last year. We're going to do it again, um, and so we're hoping that gets us another maybe two hundred dollars or so in the in the pot we can add. Awesome. I like that idea. Yeah, I remember when you changed to one main financial. I remember it well. <laughs> um, <laughs> having made the switch in OFT for you. So um anything else, Heather? Um I mean all these things are just really, really cool ideas and, and I just can't thank you enough for your success. I mean it's pretty amazing to listen and hear the things that you've done. So Sure. I think this, and if one last thing I can say is we we have been doing this for a very long time, and we've learned a lot. And I think the the best thing is to keep it simple, and um, it's good to be creative, but you always want to keep in mind the return you're going to get on your investment. So if it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of coordination for people to 
to do wrap events or something, you know, outside of just raising funds for the walk, make sure it's going to be worth your while. People's time is is precious, and um, we've simplified things a lot and ended up actually spending less time and, and making more money. Very true, very true. Good point. Heather. Go ahead. Lisa. That's great. That that's that's fantastic. Um, Heather and Sharon, thank you very much. Um, just to sort of recap a little bit, um, because these are, are just absolutely great ideas. Um, for everyone on the call, um, really no matter what size company you work in or how many people are on your team, you can use some or all of these practices. And, and Heather sort of um, listed them earlier um, again, but I'll just mention getting the executives involved really opens a lot of doors for doing all of these activities. Um, advanced planning so that you're you're good to go when you want to actually have people registering and fundraising. Um, reinforcing over and over again um, fundraising online. People are rewarded. Um, based on reaching certain fundraising levels. And um, so that's always just bringing that back home. Joining and fundraising is an important part. And I think that they, uh, they, they did a great job. Probably every organization has similar motivations. They may be in a different priority order, but competition, food, and free things is, is great. Um, then the, the frequent communication and being sure to talk about the mission of the March of Dimes, babies and families um, who are affected by premature birth, that type of thing. So um, again, any of these things you can, you can do on your team, uh, pick and choose what works for you. And I think now we will open up the conference line and see if anybody has any questions for Heather. I'm just wondering about um, such a large team, if you had, how you did the online fundraising, did you have like separate departments sign up um, with different names or was it all one general name for folks to sign up as uh, online fundraising participants? Yeah, that's a very good question. In the past, it's it's been one team and then Chrissy and I, mostly Chrissy, <laughs> has had to pull things back and, and um, line people up on our own. This year we are going with um, with team names and we're, we have um, each of our departments are going to be listed and people will have to register the department. Just um, for, for those of you who, now that we've unmuted the line, if you don't have a question, if you could push star on your phone, please. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Heather? Um, okay, then. Um, Heather, thank you for sharing what your team does to be successful. Um, you just you you have great ideas and and you you carry it out very well. Um, now I think now we'll go to Crystal Lugo from the March of Dimes, and she's going to share five tips that will help you get your team off to a great start on OFT. Thanks, Lisa. And we'll Hi, we'll meet the line again, but we. We'll mute the line again, but then we'll open it up at the end. Oh, sounds good. The conference is now in presentation mode. Hi, everybody. Um, so the first tip that I can provide um, to have a great OFT season is to include the team link to any communication that you sent out. So there's two ways that you can do this. Uh, one, if you're sending emails through March for Babies, that link will automatically be included. So if you're recruiting walkers, it'll be in that um, email you send out so they can click on it and join. The other way is to create a vanity URL, and you can do that by visiting your team dashboard, clicking on your team page, and clicking edit page. You're going to see a link that says edit address, and when you click on that, you'll see the vanity URL. It's in the middle of the page. 
create that vanity URL and save the page. And then that way, whenever you want to send out an email, use that link moving forward. And you, your, um, your, your friends and family and co colleagues can join the team in that way. The second team, or the second tip that I would like to provide is um, personalizing your team page. Um, add a photo, add a story of why it is that your team is walking for March for Babies. It really, really makes a huge difference when you personalize it with a photo or a story. And the third tip is to recruit past team members. So as an online administrator for your team, what you can do is when you click on the recruit walkers on your team dashboard, you'll be sent to the send emails team or send emails page where you can click on a link that says past team members. Anyone who is ever a member on your team, their email address will be in that address book. So all you have to do is just select the ones you want to um, send that email out to, write your message, send it out, and wait for your teammates to register. So it's a great way of making sure everybody registers when they should. The fourth tip that I would like to provide, in honor of the March of Dimes 75th anniversary, we're asking teams and walkers to take the Be Your Best for Babies Challenge. So it's a way to show how you're committed to meeting or beating your team goal. So when you log into March for Babies, you'll see it on your dashboard. Take the challenge. And the final tip that I have is uh, if you have any team members that have limited access to the Internet at work or uh, maybe just a really um, tight security in, in the work system, don't let that stand in your way. We have several apps available to you. We have the iPhone app and the Android app available to you to download for free on March for Babies. So log in, click download the app. You can download the iPhone or the Android app, and it's a great way to keep in touch with your team, a great way to see how your team is doing, see how you're personally doing. It's a great tool to have. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it on to Lisa for closing remarks. Thanks, Crystal. Um, for everyone on the call, I hope that this ha has been really helpful, and we will um, open the line up again in just a second. But I did want to say, if you have any questions about anything we if you have any questions about anything we've talked about today, please contact your local March of Dimes office or our online fundraising help desk from marchforbabies.org, you can just click the Contact Us link at the bottom of any page, and it will um, allow you to e either email the help desk or give them a call on the phone. And if you want to get questions to us, just include that in your message, or and they'll, they'll pass your call along, along to us. So thank you very much. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free for either Heather or any of the rest of us. Um, uh, hello, my name is Jennifer. I'm sorry. Um, my question, hi, Jennifer. I have, hi, I might have missed it because um, I came into the, the conference a little later. Um, now, on those links, will it have details on how to donate so I can reach my goal? Or everyone who's going to be on my team is the, is the person that's going to donate the funds? Um, when you are managing your team online, the, the link that you, the team captain, are going to send out is going to be for people to join your team, and then they should um, do the fundraising to their friends and family. Okay. So that's, that's really the way you want to build the team, is, is ask them to join, and then once they've joined, ask them to fundraise. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, another question? My name is Amber, and I was – I'm an individual team. Um, this is only our second year okay. doing it. I want to know if there was any tips that you all had in maximizing fundraising. For individuals, because, like, we have um, a <clears throat> like that. Right, right. You, um, you, you're, you're a group of friends and family who are walking together as a team. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think 
really, in in many ways, a lot of the things that Heather talked about, um, you could still do from the standpoint of frequent communication, sharing with the people who've joined your team what the goal is, um, asking for, um, you know, their support, trying to find a way to incentivize them. If incentives aren't anything that, you know, as a, as a group of, uh, as an individual team that you can do, promote the March, um, March of Dimes incentive. We have yeah. incentives um, that, that people can earn. So if you want to, to do that and just sort of apply those things that way, um, anything else, Crystal or Sharon, that you can think of that would help them? Um, I have one one tip um, for a family team or a group of friends uh, that have a team together. You can also try to get the community involved. So um, car washes are pretty are pretty good to do. Um, and not only are you raising funds, but you're spreading the mission out even further. And maybe people might want to join your team when they're getting their car washed. So that's a good way to promote your team and raise oh, funds yeah. at the same time. Yeah, but that's not a good idea. Lisa, it's Heather. Okay. I can also, what, one of the other um, things that oh. we heard from our individual, our, our, our teams as they were walking us last year, and, and probably many, many folks are doing this already, but social media um, has helped them, you know, raise a, a lot of money on their walker pages also. So they'll put their links out there and their friends will will look at it and then their friends will share it. And um, so we we had a couple people that said they doubled their uh, their contributions last year by just using Facebook and and tweeting oh, about wow. these things. Good to know. Great, great. Yeah, oh, and we did add some new functionality for for share, sharing socially um, from the desktop. So um, great, good reminder yeah. for that. Um, okay, and. <laughs> One of the things I found with my family, uh, if you haven't, and if you're only a couple of years into your team, if you haven't used the animated e-cards on the uh, online fundraising tool, I'd, I'd take a look at those because I have found every year I use the animated e-cards. It kind of kind of motivates my family to go ahead and make their donations, and they're really fun. So if you haven't done those, use those. They're really cool. Okay, I didn't. I haven't looked at those yet. Thank you. They're awesome. Try those. Okay. Any other questions for us? I have a question. Okay. Um, I was just wanting to know if we were going to have um, a car wash, do we have to have like a permit? You know, those things I think you have to you'd have to check with your community. That would not be a March of Dime um requirement. That would be, be something in the community perhaps. So um okay. Any other questions? I know we're I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, if we are uh, starting to talk to the community, asking about uh, possible donations for our fundraiser, is there anything that we can tell them um, for tax purposes or an official um, uh, just recognition or something? March of Dimes is um, any of those payments are are made direct are are written out or made to the March of Dimes, and the March of Dimes is a 503C corporation. Um, we have our that statement and our tax number, I think, is on the bottom of the website pages. Okay, I was more um, thinking and I, about Or maybe in, in the email. I was more thinking about the... Uh, gift baskets you asked to put together. Oh, oh. Um you know, I I think that, that kind of all depends. Most of that recognition would 
would come, um, I think, from from you, you know, thanking them, you could, I would probably talk to your local March of Dimes area um, office to see how they can help you coordinate all of that. I, I would recommend that you, you contact them to help for help on that. Okay, thanks. Okay, sure. Any other questions? Um, yes, I have a question. I know that the, that you're able to access um, who was on your team last year and the year before, but is there any way to get a list of people who made donations in the past towards your team? Don direct donations to your team, I would ask, you, you can't really see that online, so I would ask um, the March of Dimes can, should be able to pull a report that could help you with that. But for any of your walkers to see who donated to them in the past, when they are logged in online and they go to the area that says um, your sponsor form or my sponsor form, they click that and there's links to archived sponsor forms and they can see who donated to them in the past. Okay, great. Thank you. So they can go back to those donors. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Any any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so much. We went a little over on time, but I th you guys had some great questions, and thank you for your participation. Heather, Sharon, Crystal, thank you so much, and Good luck with March for Babies this year. Thanks for Thanks having us. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye.